First, let's talk about the Miltoniopsis. I've heard they're a very finicky orchid. They usually show up around Mother's Day in your um, grocery stores, big box stores. They're also called the pansy orchid. Oh my gosh, the fragrance on them is wonderful and the flowers are gorgeous. I just love them. I almost lost her, but um, for sentimental reasons, I really wanted to take on the challenge and grow her. It was one of the last plants that was ever given to my mother right before she passed away. And um, unfortunately, it didn't get watered enough and dried out and died. So I wanted to take on the challenge. So I went and bought one. Well, I, you know, did my research, which I encourage everyone to do. You know, um, definitely check out the internet, YouTube, all of that. Um, when you're purchasing your orchids, find out what they like, what they don't like. But then you got to go with your gut. And I had heard um, with the Miltoniopsis that, you know, like with all orchids, if they're in bloom, don't um, repot them to after the blooms died off. Well, I wish I would have done it differently. I followed that advice. And um, when I got it, it was obviously a gorgeous, beautiful uh, Miltoniopsis. It actually had the label Phalaenopsis on there. And I thought it was mislabeled, but then I found out that there is such a thing as a Miltoniopsis phalaenopsis. So I don't know if that's what this is or not. She started getting orange rot, which means your pseudobulbs here will turn orange and then the leaves will turn yellow and then it'll just die off. So I <laughs> finally got her she only had this uh suitable left and i pulled her out of the soil she had virtually no roots left so i started her off in full water culture which um ended up causing her to grow um some moss fungus or whatever on the roots so I stopped doing that. I let her dry out for a day or so. And then I started growing her. And then remember, she she only had this bulb. And it had two leaves on it and very little roots. The roots that I that she did have, I would let them soak for about 20 minutes or so, sometimes an hour. And then I would drain her off. Well, she seemed to really like that and she grew this growth which as you can see has a little baby pseudobulb there and she was regrowing new roots i was very excited yay so i continued in this fashion i did have her in a smaller vase so the water would reach her roots but her roots got so long and so extensive that i ended up putting her in a jar where her roots could uh, go down and continue to grow. She put off this new growth. And then just a couple months ago, maybe a month and a half, two months ago, she put off this third new growth. So I'm really hoping she has not obviously reflowered um, off any of the new growths because they're still small. But I'm really hoping for this one that it will grow nice and big and I will get a flower off of it. Now when I got it and I unpotted it, come to find out there were two different plants in there. So I'm not sure if they were two different colored uh, flowers or if they were the same flower. So I, I'm not really sure what I'm going to get but um we'll see so what i do with her is let me turn her around here as i put water in here probably don't have to put as much as i do um but let me 
hold her up. So not quite half, um, but I just let her sit in it. I definitely make sure not to get her um, the base of her wet or or at least uh, base of her not soaking. I don't want her base soaking, but I want her roots soaking up water. She's got a really nice thick root coming right there, which I'm really excited about. That's off the new growth. This seems to really work for me. Uh, she did, she was showing about a month or so. This one had um, one of her leaves turning yellow and it broke off, which you can see here. I hadn't really changed anything. But I realized spring had come, and she was in the east-facing window um, with the shears all uh, winter long, and she did just fine in that. But now it's spring, and we're in the Pacific Northwest, so the sun was uh, the only thing that was different. So I ended up moving her back out of the window for I don't know it's about I don't know, 20 30 feet she seems much happier now the interesting thing about the Miltoniopsis is you can tell when they're not getting enough water and let me see if I can show you if they're getting dehydrated they will have these little crinkles on their leaves I don't know if that's showing up in here and she has um, some crinkles on this leaf as well. So, um, so I, and I check, you know, I obviously check her every day because I'm watering her every day. And um, saw the crinkles and went, okay, you know, something needs to be changed. So again, it's uh, watching your plants, seeing what they're doing. Um, and I usually set her right by the sink because I go by the sink often. I let her sit there for a little bit and then um, I'm reminded, oh, you know, she's done. I need to drain her. So I, I have left her longer than, you know, 20 minutes, left her an hour, two hours. Sometimes I have left her um, too long, um, like a day, and I will drain her off and then let her dry out for a day. But I'm finding that this works really, really well. I'm really excited to be successfully growing the Miltoniopsis. What I'm finding is interesting is um, my watering of my plants is a little bit opposite of what a lot of people recommend. But again, because of my environment, my situation, I have to adjust. Like in the winter, I water my mounted orchids every day. That is because um, under my east facing window is my baseboard heater. And so in the winter, the baseboard's going, they dry out quick. Now that it's spring, we don't have the heaters going as much as they used to. I am now watering my, um, my uh, mounted orchids every other day and making sure they're not getting overwatered. The only one I really uh, keep an eye on as far as how that's gonna work out is the Oncidium, my Twinkle, because it does have such uh, thin roots. So um, really have to pay attention to uh, your environment and what's going on with that. I have to use, you know, use what I have and the east facing window my orchids love but that's where my baseboard is so you kind of have to there's recommendations and then there's you have your own environment you have what's going on in uh, your house and stuff I do fertilize her maybe again probably not as often as I should but um, I also know they're sensitive to that. So I probably fertilize her 
once a month, maybe once every two months. I, it just depends on when I remember to do it. Um, she may be doing better if I was more uh, structured about it, but I have a lot of other things going on in my life. So, so the Miltoniopsis for me is working really well by me letting her sit in water and then draining her off and letting her dry off during the day. Try to do this in the morning. And um, then the next day start the whole thing over again. So, so far, so good. I've gotten three new growths off of one bulb with hardly any roots. And she's got tons of roots now. And... Uh, Hoping for a flower. If I get one, I will definitely share it with you guys. Alright. Thanks for watching.